Bell, you encouraged or discouraged by the Cowboys in the overtime in the win over the Chargers. Yeah, I know it's tough for you to read that because both teams are actually my teams. Both teams have invested in me financially um, in my services. So, look, let me be objective about this. Um, I'm actually both. I'm encouraged and discouraged by the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm not going to ride the fence. I'm more discouraged than I am encouraged. Let's talk about the Cowboys yesterday. Um, Cowboys know that their formula for success is simple. We were just having that debate about Lamar Jackson and the way that they should approach the football game in terms of play concepts. Same thing for the Dallas Cowboys. Run the football, you guys win. The Cowboys won 11 straight games now when they're rushing for at least 175 yards. Now, 175 yards seems pretty daunting, unless you have two running backs. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't sound so daunting, does it? Ezekiel Elliott is, what do the kids call him now? Running back, RB1. That's what they call it. Y'all so corny, Friday Night Lights. Why y'all do this to me? Uh, RB1, right? And Pollard is RB2, I guess, right? Let's flip that. Um, everybody out there at SoFi that came in contact with me was basically coming with the same theme. It was two things. One, uh, where'd you get that drink from? Because they don't know where I sneak to my lounge. And the second thing is, yo, why, is not, why isn't Pollard the starting running back? Every time he gets the football, you see a different response not only from his team in terms of energy and electricity, but an outcome. Like, Tony Pollard is their starting running back. Now, by pay, by selection, by popularity, it's going to be Zeke. But stop that, y'all. If you want to have the greatest success, Pollard needs to be your starter, and you need to continue to run the football. Let's talk about why I was discouraged as well. Not only because they're not committed to the better running back, but because you look at this team defensively, I know they had some COVID issues. I know that they were playing around with the lineup. Did the Chargers punt the football yesterday? Not a single time. Did the Chargers go out there and not once but twice have points taken off the scoreboard, including one of the drives? They actually didn't get any points because they threw an interception in the end zone. Interesting. You see 99 yards of penalties, 12 penalties for 99 yards. I'm starting to add all that up. I'm like, wow. Chargers really should have won the game. I'm looking at it like how good the Cowboys can be instead of how great the Chargers really are and just gave a game away. So a little more discouraged by the Cowboys in their efforts because it's not adding up. They don't have the commitment to the running game. They should. They are not committed to the right running back in that same running game. Mm. And also, they played a team that gave them a game. They took it handily with a 56-yard field goal at the end of the game. But the point being... If you're looking at the Cowboys, you got to squint to see some good things from yesterday. Ooh, nope. good take. Um, encouraged. Am I discouraged? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> a little bit. Shell. Let me start because I'm from Dallas. You play for the Cowboys. Let's show the Cowboys love. They're an NFL team that won a game. They won a game. On the road. On the road. That's hard. Facts. That's hard. hard. As hard as can be. But now, Cowboys fans, let me give y'all, like Sale did, uh, some medicine. You might not necessarily like mm. it, but I promise it's going to be good for you. Mm. Cowboys fans, notice something. Mike McCarthy clock management, once again, it was atrocious. Cowboys fans noticed something. Week one, last year versus the Rams, Mike McCarthy, game management, atrocious. It came back to bite you later. Remember last year, 2017, y'all are down to the Rams, 11-yard line, fourth uh, quarter in the game. Y'all don't kick the field goal. Y'all lose by three. Cowboys, y'all never crossed the 46-yard line again the rest of that game. Mike McCarthy, atrocious. Mm. Cowboys last year, just like this year, they beat a team early in the season. We didn't know how good or bad they were, Atlanta Falcons. But in winning, we overlooked some flaws that would cost wow. you Cowboys fans later. Last year versus the Falcons, you run two fake punts, one of which you run in the four, first quarter when you're down 14-0 because your head coach freaked out. Dak Prescott, he fumbles on the sixth play of the game, takes a bad sack fumble, leads to the Falcons going up early. We overlooked these things because the Cowboys won. Hmm. I am not going to overlook them. I look at the game yesterday. Zeke. Probably getting too many touches, to Marcellus's point. Hmm. Pollard is the more explosive runner. I'm not yep. going to call him better, but he's a more explosive runner. Here's the other reason I'm discouraged. And I'm not going to toot my own horn as much as I'm going to say shame on the Cowboys. So, Michael Parsons, eight hurries yesterday, including a sack that was huge. Chargers were about to go score. Uh, touchdown, Parsons, 18-yard sack on Herbert. All of a sudden, they kick a field goal. Yeah. But I'm watching Cowboys play the Bucks week one, and I say... Michael Parsons is out of position in the first quarter. I tweet it by the second quarter. I say, man, Cowboys first-round pick Micah Parsons is absolutely lost as a defender in pass coverage. Then I go on to say they need to let him rush, the, rush on the ball more and put him in a position to succeed. Yeah. How did I know that? 
after watching a quarter and a half of football that Micah Parsons is best suited as a runner. Mm -hmm. But you, Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator, and Mike McCarthy, y'all didn't know that. Let me make this clear for y'all, Cowboys fans. Micah Parsons, eight hurries yesterday, most from a rookie since Nick Bosa in 2019, who I said was the Cowboys' best off-ball linebacker, not most explosive, but their best, Leighton Van Der Esch, who just so happened to have seven tackles, two tackles for loss, a sack, hmm. plus a QB hmm. hit. Hmm. I knew that after watching a quarter and a half of Cowboys play versus the Bucks. But Dan Quinn, it took Demarcus Lawrence having an unfortunate injury you for you to realize where to put your best player best. I'm discouraged, Sal. Yeah. I'm discouraged because, yes, the Cowboys won. I applaud you all for winning. But how does me, an analyst, then only watch a quarter and a half know how to play your better players, how to play your players in a better position than you all as the coaches. And Mike McCarthy, I'm still seeing the same errors from you that we've seen previously. Yeah, um, two things that highlighted from what you just said is, one, that the Cowboys don't know the best way to approach a football game. And two, they're not going to be committed to that way even if they were privy to knowing what that is. The first thing is, I don't think they know the best way for them to win. Like, because you see Dak Prescott, not this week, thankfully. Uh, he had an efficient game, but he didn't go out there and throw it 50-plus times. But at the same time, why is he in that position in the first place? Is Zeke new to this team? Is Pollard new to this team? So you've already had the success in the running game that is correlated to your success and outcome. Why not commit to the running game to a fault? They won't do that. Second of all, you just brought up another example, a recent example of Michael Parsons obviously going out there and looking great when he says, hey, the car could go forward, go in reverse, not so well. So now we're starting to see a couple of issues. The clock management, though, let's talk about that. Please Two things, do. clock management. National media kind of let them get away with this. I'm not going to let them get away with this, even though, you know, I got cowboy love. Mike McCarthy, everyone's talking about, well, why you let the clock run down and didn't run up more plays and get into that situation? What were you doing? Mike McCarthy said, well, I couldn't see the clock. It went blank on me. Then he said, well, Kellen Moore couldn't see it because the television was blocking his clock. And I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute. How'd you even get in that position in the first place? So many times in this world, people want to talk about how someone responded in the moment. And I'm always the person they call me something else, the person that comes out and says, how'd you get there in the first place? How'd you get in that bad predicament in the first place? Why were the Cowboys running the football in that moment to get to the point where they now had to make mm -hmm. a decision on clock management? You should have been throwing the football in that situation or getting the ball out of bounds. I digress. Let's also talk about this. I got to get Zeke one more. I got to give you some more Zeke. Um, I used to play running back, not nearly as well as Zeke, unless you want to count Pop Warner, but not nearly to his level. But I'm going to tell you one thing I noticed about Zeke now, and it came true and it came to fruition while I was sitting there right before the half. You remember when CeeDee Lamb caught the pass? They start running around and he's starting to lateral it. He laterals the football after running, it looks like 40, 50 yards to Ezekiel Elliott. CeeDee Lamb put in all that work to get them open to a position they could score right before the half, gift points. Give it to Ezekiel Elliott. You know what happened? Derwin James just pushed him out of bounds. Now, that may go unnoticed to the naked eye, but not to me, the running back in me. Oh, because there's two ways to play running back. You can run the football and run it like you're going to die if you don't get that yard, or you're going to run the football and just hope to stay alive to run the football again. The second is Ezekiel Elliott. He got pushed out of bounds. Comfortably, he floated out of bounds like a bubble. And then he was just running so dull to me. You ever see a running back when they get knocked down, their feet doing this, and they hit the ground? That's Pollard. Like, he's still in the air. He's still, I'm going to get that, y'all. I'm going to die for this. Zeke gets pushed out of bounds. It's just, okay, next play lineup. And I don't know if that's the money that got him a little full because he looks slimmer. He looks quicker. But something is dull about the way he's running the football. Cowboys, fix that problem. And if you can't fix that problem, he is your RB, too. The Cowboys in a win. Well, here's the thing. Because if you're watching this, like, come on, the Cowboys won. Y'all shut up. Y'all got to realize the great teams are great. The great athletes are great. The great coaches are great. The great anything at any, anybody at anything they do is great because they don't just look at the win. They say, how can we improve? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can easily look at the Cowboys win and say, okay, we don't care that Zeke's not as explosive as Pollard. Okay. We don't care that the Cowboys didn't pass for a touchdown. Okay. We don't care that the defense didn't always play great at time. No, no, no. Instead, we're looking at it and saying, wait a second now. Yeah. This game, the same exact game, if y'all play it like this, is going to cost you versus another Facts. team. Yeah. It's going to cost you. <sighs> so I've said this before. I'm going to say it a lot this, this, this year. 
And again, it's that never let the most stunningly beautiful who change your why. <laughs> you keep saying that, but I don't know if you said you ever seen I'm her. I'm saying it because... If you've <laughs> seen her, you might change that whole saying. But I, I'm saying it because Zeke is changing the Cowboys' why. Mm. You play a player because mm. they the best player. Mm. Why do you put a player on a football field? Because they give you the best chance to win. Thanks. Why do you start a running back? Because mm. they give you the best chance to attain yardage. Yeah. Why do you put somebody in the game? You put somebody in the game because they help your team more than anybody else on your roster can help your team at that moment. Yeah. But the Cowboys are letting these stunningly beautiful who's, mm. like Ezekiel Elliott, because like he's Zeke. a stunningly beautiful uh, running back. Chill. They're letting them change They why. <laughs> he looked the part. 6'2", 225, chisel, got his abs back, looked mm. apart, got the nose ring. But <laughs> got his abs back. The why sell is what the Cowboys are changing. And then I look at that game, mm. I'm like, wait a second. It didn't, ca it didn't cost the Cowboys today. Yeah. But the way the Cowboys played against the Falcons week two last year didn't cost the Cowboys week two. Yeah. Best believe it cost them from week three to week si uh, 17. Yeah. And that's where I'm at with these boys. Man, it's a silly, silly situation to see. Look. This is why people say crazy stuff like, oh, man, you learn more when you lose. It's just because when you win, you're just a little mm -hmm. full, a little fat, a little high on the hog, and it shouldn't be that way. Even in success, you got to look for ways to improve. Profits and losses in the real world, P&Ls, right? In, in sports, is performance and outcomes, like P&Os. Okay, the outcome was great. You know how many times I lost contain and we won the game? And I'm sitting there like, boy, if I do that again? Because mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose contain and you lose the game. And then they're going to hang you yes, out to yes, dry. Sir. This is a moment, Cowboy fans, you should be proud of. You went on the road. You won a game. But dang it, y'all keep doing this this way? Oh, that's going to be one of the few games you win this year.